Welcome back to the Washington College Sports Spotlight Series. A new guest joining us this time from the men's lacrosse team, Ewan Temple. Ewan, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me on, Nick. I'm excited. Yeah, so so to start things off, let's talk a little bit about uh, your guys' season as a whole. You've had some some pretty solid wins, and you yourself have had a really strong campaign, a team-high 28 goals, a team-high 46 points. If you could just talk to me a little bit about how this season has gone, both for the team and and some of the successes that you found personally as well. Uh, so for the team, I mean, it hasn't been the season we've hoped for in terms of wins and losses, but I mean, along the way, we've made a lot of growth, uh, especially across the board. You look at underclassmen stepping up, uh, the whole team kind of starting to play with confidence and we're really kind of gelling together here. Like I said, unfortunately, it is, it is sad that we got, no matter what happens, Saturday is going to be our last go, but uh, this team's been the progress that's been made has been exponential. And I think, I think it's really something to build for, build for going forward. And then, I mean, myself, I mean, it's been great to see. I mean, I put a lot of work in the off season in, so it's great to kind of start to, you know, reap the benefits on an individual level, but that doesn't start without the other nine guys who are out there on the field with me going to battle every single day with practice and then come game time. For you guys who are seniors this year, you're going in as those upperclassmen leaders without those full seasons of experience between the COVID cancellations and some of the, the schedule changes you guys had to have. I guess if you don't mind, tell me a little bit about what it's been like for you to step up as a senior leader on this team, um, I guess, given the unusual circumstances. Yeah, I mean, so exactly like the first, the last season I had, that was a full regular season was my freshman year. I mean, it is different being a freshman, someone who kind of is on the outside of not playing, not, you know, not, not getting the same type of role, not being in the same type of role I am now. So it's definitely been a different uh, shift in how, you know, I approach the week by week, how the team approaches the week by week. So kind of, you kind of gain that experience through just every single day. Myself, Ryan Leahy, Kyle Gittleman, and Matt Haig, we've all done a really good job being the four seniors on this team, adapting, uh, being the ones who have stuck with it throughout these four years. Uh, and we've, we've kind of grown together. We've known where we have the most uh, kind of pull, I guess you could say, with the team when it comes to kind of rallying us together and making sure we're kind of steadfast going the direction we want to go. So, I mean, like I, like I said, I can't do it without the other, other three guys who – help me and then the, the trickle down effect of the juniors who help us there. So it's, it's really an all inclusive effort. One of your more impressive performances came last Wednesday on the road at McDaniel. I mean, a five goal effort, really the catalyst of that offense in that 14 to nine game that, I mean, you, you kind of jumped out with the three early goals and that sort of drove you guys forward. You were able to hold on down the stretch. Tell me a little bit about what that game was like for you. Maybe maybe where your head was at with that. Um, was it in the back of your head at all, the kind of night you were having? Or or, or what was what was going through your head? I mean, like, you kind of always know what, what you got in your hand when you're playing out there. But, I mean, like, we, we had a big – we had just come off two big wins. Uh, we, it was another – for some reason, we play great on Wednesday nights. So uh, we've been playing great on Wednesday nights here. Uh, so going into that game, it was like, let's try to get a third one under our belt uh, and then kind of get some momentum going into FNM on Saturday. So that game when we got up, we got a jump on him 8-1, really. Uh, it was just about, you know, us moving the ball, kind of attacking, uh, really. We were play, we When we're successful, we play with so much poise. We play with so much confidence and we get to our spots quick. And they were just all following my direction for the first half of that game. And you know, when you're shooting like that, it kind of seems hard to miss at some points. Uh, the coaches joke, I like to go high to high a lot. Uh, but I mean, they were falling, so I can't I can't complain too much. But uh, my teammates were finding me in great spots. I was getting myself in great spots. And it was just we were like I said, when we're scoring the ball at that rate, we're, we're playing really fast when we're playing really hard. To sort of jump off that question a little bit. What have been some of your favorite moments of this season, if you have any? As you said, coming down to, unfortunately, the last game of the year here this weekend, what have been some of your favorite moments from this season? Uh, so I would say the win, the win against SWAT, uh, what is it, three Wednesdays ago, 
I feel was just a really, it was a great team win. It was our first centennial win. It was kind of our first centennial win against an outside competition that had, they, they had just come off a win versus Gettysburg. They were, they were coming in here to our place hot on a Wednesday. So that was a really great win. Just, it was down to the last minute. Ben Dickinson scored that last around the world goal. So that kind of just highlighted that's that kind of just started the highlight uh, for the season, I guess, in my mind. And then right after that, going to Haverford, uh, getting another great team win, I guess you could say was another highlight of the season and one of the best moments I've had this year. Uh, but other than that, I mean, like, it's hard to say because we haven't gotten the wins and losses. We, the wins we've hoped for this year, but just kind of on a sentimental note, uh, probably going down to W now, the first game of the season, being able to stay in a hotel and just hang out with the guys and have a night before the game uh, that isn't about lacrosse. We kind of, we kind of get to stay in a hotel, we get roommates. Uh, and that's kind of what the college experience has been about. And that's like the student athlete experience you get. So that was a really great moment and a really fun moment outside of lacrosse that I think is worth highlighting too. What is your perspective? What does the future look like for this young team that you guys are leaving behind for, for all the guys that, that are, are going to be stepping into the, the role that you're holding now next year. And then for some of the young, the younger, upper, younger underclassmen, uh, the freshmen and sophomores that are going to be taking bigger steps into roles next year. What's your perspective on what this team's going to look like moving forward? What are some of the bright spots for the future? Uh, so first I'll premise it with saying I am coming back for a fifth year. Uh, so I will be back next year. Uh, the, the good thing is, I guess it's good in the sense of the question you asked. We are only graduating three seniors, uh, Ryan Leahy and goal. Kyle Gittleman on defense, and then Matt Haig, a short stick defensive midi. Uh, but the great thing about this team is we've had so many guys get time in valuable positions uh, early on in their career. We got an attack freshman. We got freshmen and sophomores getting time all over the field. We got guys who were freshmen last year getting time throughout the whole season. So it's kind of it's kind of building up to that that really level where they know how to play in big games. They know how to play throughout the season. They know what it takes to withstand the whole season. So, I mean, we're, we're returning a lot of kids. We're returning a lot of kids who have gotten valuable minutes and kids, even if they didn't get those valuable minutes, they've gotten the exposure to what it takes to uh, be a part of a team that wants to compete at a high level. So next year they'll come back even better. Uh, we're bringing in, hopefully they'll be able to come in. I mean, you're expected to be able to uh, come in as a freshman and be able to help the team grow so it takes the whole roster but future wise we're we're looking really good with the the amount of people we got coming back and those kids who have gotten uh time throughout the past two years so it'll be really fun to see and really fun to be a part of what are some of your studies like what are you studying at washington um and then Obviously, you're coming back for your fifth year, but what are some of the things you have in mind in terms of post-grad plans or anything you might want to pursue after graduation? I'm an American studies major uh, with a communications minor and a marketing minor uh, after graduation. So like I said, I am coming back from a fifth, for a fifth year, which I'll, I'll just continue my degree. Uh, after graduation, because of COVID, I look to take my uh, a grad degree year somewhere. So I'd like to go play somewhere while getting a graduate degree and most likely uh, getting an, an, an MBA, but I don't know. I So I want to go the exercise science route. I want to be in strength conditioning after uh, following college. So I've really thought about either doing an MBA uh, or doing exercise science, but I feel like if I want to open up uh, and be in the private sector, I need to have that business and uh, marketing experience. So that's probably what I'm leaning towards. Uh, doing my grad degree in and just kind of learning uh, exercise science. And I mean, I'm, I'm big into the weight room. I love the weight room. I've had internships uh, with Nick Triano here at the, the college. I've had an internship in Ken Island at another strength conditioning facility. So I'll probably learn that stuff as I go. 
but following right after college at Washington College, I'll probably go get a grad degree somewhere. So away from lacrosse, I can tell just from the the few minutes we've spoken here that you eat, sleep, breathe lacrosse. But uh, in terms of off the field, what are some of the the hobbies or activities you get up to you like to do in your free time? So uh, I love hanging out with my dog. I got a dog about a year, year and two months ago. Uh, He lives with me here at school. Uh, I love hanging out with my friends, kind of a cliche one, but I mean, they're my greatest support system. So I love hanging out with them, whether I'm at home or here. Uh, in terms of what I do here, I mean, like you said, it was kind of just eat, sleep, breathe, lacrosse, but, uh, I love playing FIFA. I mean, I love video games. Um, you can't, can't go wrong with video games. You can't go wrong with just kind of being lazy, watching some YouTube, watching some Netflix. So, I mean, if I'm not doing anything related to lacrosse, not hanging out with my dog or just kind of just chilling, I'm probably doing one of those three things. Uh, so that's kind of the gist of it for me. So just one last question uh, to bring things back to lacrosse and to sort of put a bow on things here. Uh, as we've touched on, uh, your last game for the season is coming up this weekend, and obviously you'll be coming back next year, so it's nothing too final. Um, but what what are your goals for the last game of the year, and I guess what are you hoping to to leave out on that field on Saturday? This Saturday for me is all about showing our, th- showing our three seniors a great time, uh, sending them out the right way, showing them that – Washington College is in a good place and that they made change here and that, you know, their time, regardless of the wins or losses we had in the past four years, it did not go unseen. Their work did not go unseen and that where we are and what they contributed, we're going to knock off some high level teams and we're going to be in a good place going forward. I mean, we got a 15 and 0 team Dickinson coming in here this Saturday number eight in the country. They got, I mean, we took them to OT last year. They're definitely not the same team as they were last year, but I mean, when we play our best, we're right there with anyone in the Centennial. So that's the type of game we're looking to go out there and play on Saturday. And we're going to, we're going to send the seniors out the right way. And then we're going to go to the fish fry afterwards and we're going to have a great time. And they're going to, they're going to love being at Washington college one last final time. You and Temple, men's lacrosse uh, leading scorer. Thanks again for stopping by the spotlight and best of luck on Saturday. Thank you.